Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. I welcome you to listen to the word of the Lord tonight, but beforehand, I would like to invite you for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, speak to us at this moment. Maybe some of us are listening, Lord, and we're going through something, a tough time tonight, or perhaps we are just listening to this video because we came to it by chance. Or perhaps, oh God, someone sent this video. But whatever the reason may be, we know, Lord, this moment is not a coincidence. Speak to us tonight, to every single one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's great to see everybody again. I'm so glad that you're able to tune in to tonight's program. And I would like to share tonight the word of the Lord from the book of Chronicles. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 14, verse 2, says this, And Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. King Asa was a good king. He was a king of the, from the kingdom of Judah. At that time, the kingdom of Israel had split into two parts. The northern part was led by the descendants of the kings who are not from the line of David, but the southern part, with the capital of Jerusalem, that's where the descendants of King David had, had ruled. And King Asa was a really good king. He did what was right. He was a king that did his best to make sure that the welfare of his country in his generation are all taken care of. His people had peace and the country was strong, but he did not stop there. He was someone who really thought of the next generation. My brothers and sisters, how many times have you ever heard of a story? Perhaps there's a successful businessman and he worked really hard from the bottom up. Then the child of that person, the son maybe, took over the business. But then the business didn't go so well after that. Maybe the son made some poor decisions. However, Tonight, we want to learn about the fact that a father's decision to invest in the next generation would really make a big difference. In the story of King Asa, he was a king that eventually when he died, his son by the name of King Jehoshaphat took over. And his son really became a king that accomplished so much, just like his father did. He was a king that relied on the Lord his God. In the moment where the kingdom of Judah was about to be attacked by three armies, the armies from Moab, Ammon, and the people from Mount Seir, what had happened was Jehoshaphat came before God. Praise the Lord his God. He did his best to prepare for the war. However, the Lord gave him victory. He was a man of faith. And another time when he was surrounded by enemies, he cried to the Lord his God, and the Lord his God had saved him. In the end of the story, the kingdom, the realm that Jehoshaphat had ruled in, had rest on all sides. The question is, how did that happen? How could a king become such a good king as he was? Of course, in part, it was because he had a good father. A father who made the right decisions. A father who really had done his best to make sure that his son, the ruler of the kingdom after him, would also be a person who loves the Lord. And if we read on in that chapter of Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 14, it said the following in Second Chronicles 14 verse 7. And he said to Judah, let us build these cities and surround them with walls and towers, gates and bars. The land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him and he has given us peace on every side. So they built and prospered. They built and prospered. King Asa understood that the land in which they were living in was theirs because they did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. 
Today we have a choice to do what is good and right. Perhaps you are a father and you have a child. You have a son or daughter or you have sons and daughters. Whatever your situation might be, always remember that your decisions will impact their lives. Maybe you are saying to me now that, you know, I'm not married. I don't have a son or a daughter. I'm, I'm a person who maybe my father did not make a good decision in the past. That's why I'm suffering right now. Or perhaps you're blaming the past. And the thing is this, I understand pain is a part of life. Hurts and pains, it's unpleasant. However, we have a choice. Are we going to let our hurts and pains lead us and bring us into a future that's also full of hurt and pain? Or are we going to decide today that enough is enough? I will be the difference maker. And my brothers and sisters, we can do that. We can do what is right and we can do what is true and correct in the eyes of the Lord. Not because we are strong on our own, but because of the strength that comes from the word of the Lord. It is very important in order for us to be able to do the right thing every day, for us to spend time in God's words. Maybe you're saying, isn't it enough if I just come to church once a week? Let's just listen to the pastor speak. Listen to Mok Sanim and the Tondo Sanim speak. Isn't that enough? Well, my brothers and sisters, I tell you this. Our lives as Christians, it is also a life that includes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and of course Sunday too. Let us not just be Sunday Christians. Let us not just act good in church, but then outside of the church, we curse or we're not nice to our family. I'd like to encourage you to come before the Lord and decide. I will do what is right. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. My brothers and sisters, when we read the Bible, we are not just reading the Bible, but when we read, our faith grows. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ. The next verse that I'd like to read comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 18. It says the following, And he said, and he brought into the house of God the sacred gifts of his father and his own sacred gifts, silver gold and gold and vessels. Silver and gold and vessels. King Asa made preparations. He made preparations, of course, to make sure that the house of God is taken care of as best as he could have prepared it. He made the preparation not just for himself and his own house, but he made sure the house of the Lord is taken care of. Now today, everyone's busy. We can say that I'm busy with work, I'm busy with school, I'm busy with my children, I'm busy with my business, I am busy with uh, the problems of life, I am busy with people who are not grateful. Well, my brothers and sisters, there's always a reason for us to be busy about something. And it's not wrong to be busy. It's good to be busy. It's good to keep ourselves occupied. Yes, but never forget one thing, that our hard work alone is limited but we have a god who is limitless when we come before god when we come before him and bring to him our hurts our pains the pains in the past that happened when we come before him and surrender our lives that's when we feel we will feel and receive rest that is the moment where the power of god will come upon us when we know we're not able to do it on our own. We're not able to run the business that we have on our own. We're not able to raise the children that we have on our own. We're not able to forgive and let go based on our own strength. But when we come before God and we put into practice the word of the Lord, 
the teachings of our Lord in the Bible, then life will become easier. Life will become more bearable. Not just more bearable in the sense that, okay, that's it. I live and things are getting better and that's all. But we will have peace, joy, and strength that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. You might be living in the midst of problems right now. You might be living in the midst of people who maybe are giving you a hard time. But rather than just holding on to the hurt and pain and the burden all on your own, why not come to Jesus? Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come before Jesus tonight to do what is good and right. Seems like an easy thing to do, but in practice, sometimes it's tougher. I don't blame you. I often wish, of course, that the things that happened in the past did not happen. Or I sometimes wish I could go back in time and fix things. However, my brothers and sisters, we can't go back to the past. But we can surely make a decision today to ensure that the future will be better than the past. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9, Jesus said the following, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. When we learn about King Asa in the beginning of this program, when you were listening to the verses I read, he did what was good and what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And he was an example to his son. However, what about in cases where Maybe you said, I didn't have good examples growing up. I wish I did, but I did not. My brothers and my sisters, I'd like to tell you today, never forget your identity. Once you have received Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, you are God's child. You are God's precious son. You are God's precious daughter. You are loved by God. Our first identity is, we are children of the Lord. You are a prince, son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a princess. Never let your own mind or your own heart tell you otherwise. Sometimes when we let our hearts and our minds be, oftentimes negative things come up. Oftentimes discouraging thoughts come up. But instead of letting all those things come into our head, always choose instead to put into our mind what the Bible says, to put into our hearts the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible went on to say in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My brothers and sisters, don't you know what Jesus said? He said that he came so that we may have life and have it in abundance so that you and I can have life. He is our good shepherd. He is our best friend. And he is the best teacher and role model we can ever ask for. Today, make the right decision. Let go of the past. Choose to do what is right. Choose to do what is good. Perhaps there's been disappointments in your past, hurt, pain. Maybe you've done things right, but the wrong thing seems to be happening. Don't be discouraged. Keep on moving forward. Do not give up. The fight is not over yet. Verse 11 of Matthew chapter 6 says this. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. Therefore, doing what is good and right is a daily thing that we have to do. One day at a time. One day at a time, one step at a time. Might not be easy, but the more we do it, the easier it will become. One day at a time, one step at a time, one thing at a time. So that each step of the way, we will become more patient, more kind, more loving, more forgiving, and we'll be a stronger person. 
We will be that person that the next generation can look up to. The mother that the child can look up to. The father that, they are, that his sons and daughters can look up to. The role model that the people in the neighborhood, in the community can look up to. This day and age, lots of things are going on. So many bad news, pieces of bad news coming here and there. But we have a decision every single day to start our day and end our day with the good news. That is the preached word of Christ. My brothers and sisters, never forget one thing. That you are loved by God. We are able to love others. We are able to make the right decisions. To do what is good and right. Because God first loved us. And because Jesus Christ died for your sins and for my sins. Other people may have hurt you. Other people may have disappointed you. But know one thing. Jesus Christ is the same, the Bible said. Yesterday, today, and forever. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. My prayer is that you continue to read your Bible every day. At the very least, if you said, I'm very busy, I don't have time. At the very least, begin your day with one Bible verse and end your day with one Bible verse. And then from there, you can add to two more Bible verses, three more, four, and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. And in closing, I'd like to read you that one verse that I began the sermon with. Second Chronicles. From Second Chronicles chapter 14, verse 2. And Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. Choose today to do what is right. Choose today what is good. And if you're asking me, how do I know what's good and right, what to do and what not to do, then read the Bible, my brothers and sisters. And not only that, if you're not a part of a church, I encourage you to join a part of a church, a Bible study where you can grow together with the people in that church, in that Bible study, where you can be built up so that more and more you can be the person that God wants you to be. You and I were created in God's image. Never forget that. So if you're feeling tired, lonely, unable to do things, unable to do the right things, today, make a decision. Come before Jesus in prayer. Come before Jesus in thanksgiving. You might say, I don't have a reason to be thankful for. Never forget, if you are still alive and you can hear this message being preached, you are blessed because you are not deaf. If you can see this video right now, you are blessed because you can see you are not blind. And perhaps you feel, well, if my body was healed of this sickness, then I will be grateful. I will be thankful. My brothers and sisters, never forget Jesus Christ before performing the miracles of feeding the 5,000 people and the 4,000 people. And those were just men, not including children and women. What did Jesus do? He gave thanks before performing the miracles. Gave thanks, said a blessing, then the miracles happened. Today, be thankful. Be grateful. Be thankful that the best gift ever has been given to us. That is salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. With that alone, we can choose to be grateful and to be thankful and then decide to do what is good and right. Do good and do right, just like King Asa, so that the next generation will benefit from our decisions. Today, let us make a decision to do what is good and to do what is right. This evening, if you have never received Jesus as your personal Savior, if this is the first time you've ever heard about the gospel that Jesus saves, I would like to invite you to pray this prayer with me to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
my brothers and my sisters, Jesus Christ is coming soon. He said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. If you've never invited Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior, and you would like to, right now, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord, may you come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I believe, Lord, that you died on the cross and you rose again, and that you're going to come again soon. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and my sisters, if you have prayed that prayer, know that you have been born again. Know that there is a second chance with the Lord Jesus. Or perhaps you're listening to this sermon and you've been out of church for a while. Come back to church. Decide to come to church this Sunday. Come to a Bible study. Do not delay. For we don't know how long we will live for. But we do know if we have today, then let's make the most Let's do the best that we can today. Amen. With that, I will leave you until we meet again next time. God bless you and Jesus loves you. Take care.